So hello and welcome back to the Champ Today Racing Podcast, previewing the Caspian Caviar Gold Cup this week and the, the Cheltenham, Ch- Cheltenham, of course, and Navins on Sunday as well. Joined again by Thomas Coyle, racehorse trainer from Batterstown County Mead. Good evening, Thomas. Good evening, Barry. How are you? Um, very good. You've two runners tomorrow. We'll speak about it later on. And Andrew Blair White from the Blair White blog back with us again. How are you, Andrew? Yeah, very good, Barry. How are you? Very good. So, lads, listen, we'll cut straight to the chase. I suppose the last week in racing, a uh, fantastic weekend last week with the John Dirk and, of course, at Punches Town on Sunday. I think, Andrew, you were there, but just eye catcher, an eye catcher from both the and performance of the week. Andrew, we'll start with you. Uh, I thought a big eye catcher down at Punches Town. Uh, I, I think I'm putting up too many horses that are falling as my eye catcher, but this is another one. Uh, a Mullins horse called Breakin who fell at uh, three out in the beginners, uh, was traveling like an absolute dream, was actually jumping really well as well. It was a bizarre fall, to be honest. Um, had had everything barred on vegan already beat. Uh, yeah. I think he's a, he's a pretty good horse. He's obviously, he was a bit inexperienced last year, was very keen. Uh, he wasn't quite as keen um, on Sunday, and I thought he was going to win, to be honest. I thought he would beat Dunvegan. Um, the two mile novice chase division isn't the strongest, and I think he could actually take fairly high rank uh, if he, if he can get a, a good round of jumping in. And just one over in Sandown, uh, pr- pretty obvious, but I thought the run of waiting patiently in the Tingle Creek was an absolute stormer. Uh, two miles wouldn't really be his trip, um, so it'll be interesting to see how he goes back over maybe two and a half next time out. He's a class horse. Last year was a bit, um, was just a bit of a write-off, got brought down in the King George, seemed to lose a bit of confidence with his jumping after that, uh, but it was much more assured performance, and uh, he, he's, a, he's a good horse at the end of the day, and I think he'll win some big races this year. Yeah, interesting actually on um, waiting patiently. He was a horse I followed as a novice and actually backed him for the King George uh, when he was brought down. But Malcolm Jefferson, the late Malcolm Jefferson, I think I just saw an interview during the week saying that he believed maybe his, his best trip maybe at two miles. And obviously everyone thought he was going to be that three mile chaser unexposed um, coming into open company last year. It just didn't quite work out. But interesting one. Andrew, definitely waiting patiently to see where he goes next. Thomas, the last week in racing, I catch her and I suppose performance of the week for you. Yeah, um, just fairly obvious as well, but um, I thought Tornado Flyer on Saturday in Navin was very good. It was a decent race with um, Gordon's two horse, Simon so Game Changer, and E. Claire de Beaufou, who had won his beginner as well in Wexford earlier on the year. He um, didn't look likely at one stage, but he um, he really ran to the line. Um, it's probably a decent race because um, I'm a game changer. I think came from England and it's rated around 140. And he bet him well enough. He bet him by five or six lengths going to the line. So um, he's definitely one for the William Mullins Brigade to probably keep an eye on for around Christmas. And just from Punchestown, I taught um, present Percy. Uh, over two and a half mile um, you would have to be delighted if you were uh, Pat Kelly on his first run back since last year's Gold Cup um, staying on all the way to the line as well um, he could be he could be the horse that's forgot about for the Gold Cup um, with all these novices coming on but um, just I really liked what I seen jumped, travelled and uh, was running through the line so definitely, definitely plenty of life left in him Fantastic. Just two, I'm going to contribute very little um, to the last week in racing because, lads, as you know, I got engaged on Saturday last and I was down on one knee up in Belfast in the Merchant Hotel um, when all this racing was going on. But one from half 11 um, on on the entry of Saturday, one that that I I saw win at Wincanton, and I see he wins again here. And I I just had a look. It was was maybe a little bit more workmanlike, but I do think he's a nice novice as Edward Stone of Alan King. And just one other I'll mention as well, Andrew, you spoke about him last week. You said he would definitely win and Native River absolutely bolted up, of course, in the Manny Clouds chase. So, it's nice to see him maybe as he had a lot of mileage on the clock. Um, I suppose um, last year, nearly back in the last season, well, maybe a fresher horse this year. And I thought he done it well, beating beating Black Heart. And I know he was getting weight, but I thought that was a nice a nice looking performance as well. But listen, we'll crack on to um, Friday. 
Um, tomorrow's racing kicks off, of course, at Shelton with the Caspian Caviar, Caviar Gold Cup on, on, on Sunday. We know that. But on Friday, we're recording this on Thursday night. Friday, lads, West Approach went off favour, to my knowledge, for, for, the, for the Hennessy. He was brought down very early in play. He's, he's second favourite, I believe, here on, on, on Friday for the, the, the Three Mile 2. We'll just pull it up here now. In front of me, lads. But he's favourite here. He was he was a subject of a big punt, lads, in for, for, for that Hennessy. I'd say Robbie Power, he absolutely hammered the ground um, when, when he came down. It's the, it's the Beck Victor, that's my grade, grade three um, handicap. is at uh, half past two on Friday. Um, but th- there is a punt as well here, Andrew, on, on one for the road, Tom. Harry Fry and... and, and um, and JP McManus. He's only rated 125, but there's a couple of nice types in here, including the Rock the Casbah, um, who you put up earlier in the season. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a very open race. Um, I think it's the the price has gone on on one for the road. Tom, uh, he ran he ran an eye catching race behind the conditional and West Approach in Cheltenham. Uh, but he's now down to four to one, seven to two. Last time I checked, and I don't think he's worth that price. No. His jump has been uh, sloppy enough in previous starts. Um, I know he's a bit of a near horse, but in this race, I was uh, quite keen on single farm payment at around 13 to 2. He's, he's an each way proposition. Uh, he was second in this race last year or six pounds higher, and he seems to save the best handicap for for Cheltenham. Um, so hopefully, he, he can put in a decent enough performance again. Uh, West Approach, I'd classify probably as the main danger, uh, but he's a he's a horse I'd struggle to have confidence tipping up because he does have to be delivered almost on the line, which for a three mile chase is is tricky. Robbie Parr obviously got it, got it right brilliantly at the November meeting at Cheltenham, uh, but that was a magic ride from from Robbie that day, uh, and it's going to be tricky for him to to pull that off again. I think so. I'd take him on. The other thing I would say about West's approach is for obviously the conditional will come out and he was tied, form tied in and, and obviously um, came a, a near second time. You put up the conditional for, for, for the Hennessy. Um, anything in this? It's not a race I have a major opinion in opinion on. Sorry, what about you? Yeah, look, um, I, I, I would fancy one for the road, Tom. Um, he's seven pounds better off for the last run for four lengths and it's a positive Aidan Coleman taking over um, a board from Anya O'Connor, who, who's, who's actually had a good good few weeks of it. Um, she had that double in Fairy House. But um, I think with Aidan taking on and doing 10-1 is a big sign. But the other horse that has form with him as well is the Twiston Davis horse. And I think he's um, I think he's about £10 oh, better yes. off for uh, Cogri. Yeah? Uh, he's about £10 better off for West Approach for only beating the two lengths. Um, might be a little bit more value at eleven to two because, as um Andrew has said, one for the road. Tom is is shortening up, but um, maybe one. I think it's each way first four. So uh, Cogri could be one to side with, and he won this race last year as well. Has has won over the course three times. You know he he's a good solid handicapper. You know you know what you're getting with this lad, and um just on the on the balance of the form and the weights turning around, he's should definitely be there thereabouts. Fair enough, lads. We'll move on to the Saturday and, of course, the big one, the feature, the Caspian Caviar um, Gold Cup. Lads, the top two here in the market, um, Sepage, who's four to one, who's, sorry, who's, Sepage is second favourite now, he's six to one, but um, Riders on the Storm used to be trained by Tom Taff, of course, in Ireland. And then, uh, I suppose, th- those two, uh, Riders on the Storm got up £13 pounds for, his, for his win at entry, but the two came miles clear of the rest, and the form has been frank since. Um, they're obviously four to one, six to one here with Ben XS. Um, there's two in here I like, but Andrew, I'll come to you first. You like a big, juicy handicap like this on a Saturday. Um, we, uh, Ronan Groom does as well. Ronan's not with us today. Um, but give us your thoughts on this one, maybe maybe two against the field. Uh, yeah, I, I have two. Um, I'd be... Against riders on the storm, to be honest, um, four to one in a handicap like this doesn't doesn't scream value to me. And he, he's obviously he's got a lot of ability, but last year for Tom Taff he had his jumping problems. Uh, I quite fancied him in the 
novice handicap at the festival and he, he fell pretty early on. Me and you both. <laughs> uh, the two I'd have here are, uh, one is the David Pipe trained Warthog at 10 to 1, uh, ran, a, ran a very good race in the Bet Victor over course and distance last month. Um, he's a good, good solid jumper from the front, uh, hopefully can, can travel well and, and jump a few of these into submission. Uh, like he did in that race uh, last month. That that race looks to be working out not too bad as well. And one I'd take a stab at, at um, I think he's around 12, 14 to 1, if you look around, is a horse called Benatar for... Uh, hey, 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 hey. That's two horses you're after taking on me, Andrew. I'll let you make my case for me. I, I won't even bother now. <laughs> <laughs> Pure coincidence. I I thought nobody else would be another. I, to put up I actually was definitely going to put up Benatar as well on his JLT yeah. road. <laughs> yeah. Clean sweep, clean sweep, lads. Go on. Um, yeah, no, I just I, I really like Benatar. I thought he'd win a handicap like this last year. Uh, things didn't quite go right for him, but he he does pull very hard. But he's I he's by far the best horse ability wise in this race i yeah. think if he was to put it all together he would win um so you're you're obviously there's risks attached with him but he's only um he, he's he's not top weight anymore uh he's been dropped a couple of pounds and i just think he's he is the best horse in the race and if he was to get his act together he, he'd win this race yeah, I think so. Listen, he's a horse that um, pr- um, promised very, uh, he promised quite a lot in his earlier days as an office chaser. Slight, slightly went off to me. Went off favourite actually for the race that surname won in Sandown as well. So he obviously is a horse of, of high class, like you said, but I do like this warthog as well. Um, you've, uh, you, you haven't left much for me to say here on this, Andrew, but um, I, do, I do think he might, his form suggests that I suppose the softer the ground stays, the better. And I'm not sure why is, is is the weather forecast. You might you might be able to give us an update on that um, for 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 Saturday. I'm not very sure, but any little bit of soft, I suppose, it stays in that ground is is gonna is gonna help um, his cause. Tom, had you anything else to, to mention for this? Yeah, well, I was I was going on Benatar from his his run two years ago in the JLT. He had horses like Kemboy and that behind him. But as Andrew said, he he's not he's not the he doesn't be the easiest on himself with, with his with his running tactics. Um just one other one that um you'd be taking a leap of faith with as well as Lawler. Um step up and trip here is probably I think is key. Um he ran in that race in Exeter, the is a um the race that Janika Yeah, he ran in that race that Janika um got massively outpaced and wasn't jumping well, but he actually did stay on well up the straight you know Exeter I think they have four or five fences up the straight he actually did get running again um think maybe this this trip um just going that little bit easier um might help him I'd see Aiden Coleman again on him um 11-6 like he was he was touted as a very good horse and last year like he was um going running against horses did he take on uh, horses like um uh, Dynamite Dollars, a few of them, uh, or new. I know. He, he's, well, early in the, the season, problem. Tom, early, on Lawler, just on that, uh, the Arkell trial that he won at, at the um, at the Cheltenham, I think it was the November meeting. Um, you yeah. know, he, he was he was mightily impressive that day. I mean, he just seemed to I'd lose his far more than anything. I, I like two miles didn't seem a problem to him that day, and it's it's hard to to to, to maybe figure out how how well the farm worked down of that particular race afterwards. Um, but well, that, 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 that was tailed off in that race. Yeah, all or one. Like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I saw like yeah no yeah yeah he wasn't himself. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. He, well, he is a horse of high class, definitely. Like, he's he's a Grade One winner over hurdles, like in 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 a handicap, you know, and. You know, just if it does all come back to him, and um, I know it's a small yard, and he's their their leading light for Everton, so he's minded like whatever. Um, yeah, he just could be if he does, and I do, I do think the step up and trip is going to massively help him. Um, just Everton will be going a bit easier for his jumping and Everton, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised now to see him to see him being there thereabouts. 
He's a horse. I'd say bring the house down if he if 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 he if he won for connections. Um, look at yeah, as I said, like he has he has course form, so you, you you just don't know. He could be on a nice mark, lads. Listen, it's such a shame Colin Finley isn't with us tonight. He's down with the Christmas lights. I'm from Sadie Rama, Robin de Champs Finley. Um, so from the missus. Colin could be proposing soon again now. But Alexier the nuts is the horse that he loves, and he's put him up. Of course, he's made no secret um, how how much he fancies this horse this year. Based on, I suppose, early novice form last year and, I suppose, the depth, the lack of depth, I suppose, in this champion hurdle market. Pentland Hills is the 11 8, eight favourite for the 305 at Cheltenham. It's the international hurdle. Uh, a race, of course, loved by the new one, won three times. Many to yours as well. He's the four-year-old in this. I suppose he's, he's carries 11-3. Um, so he, 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 he may have a tough ass. He, he's very short for this, I think. Look, he... he Trying for the winner last year and backed it up at entry, um, but he is quite short, I suppose, against horses in here that um, are, are of the of the quality that 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 is one that I like just in particular, um, and I, I still think he'll have to improve a lot. But uh, I thought on his great wood run, of course. We were we ran Harambi, but Monsieur Lecoq um, has gone up five pounds for his third place uh, finish in that. But I thought he pulled. He pulled like an absolute train. I spoke about horses that, that pull very hard. Um, and just slightly off topic, lads, any, I would encourage you to, to go back and look at Peak Sue and Ascot uh, in 2013. I've never seen a horse pull as hard and win a race. Um, and Sir Lecoq, even though he finished third, was something similar. He pulled so hard in that great wood hurdle. And I just think... Um, there's more to come from him. Like he might end up at a mark of about 160, which I suppose Call Me Lord's already on in here. Um, but he's a horse, I suppose, maybe of the outsiders that if he did line up in this, I might give a slight chance to. But uh, Andrew, you'll definitely have an opinion on this, I've no doubt. Um, well, I'd, I'd actually be agreeing with Colm. I think at the at the prices here, Elixir de Nuts is, is to play at, at 13 to 2, 7 to 1. Uh, I'd be with you. Like Pentland Hills probably should win the race if he if he's worthy of being second or third favourite for the champion early, probably should be winning a race like this, but he's too short. Um I'd be a bit windy about the triumph hurdle form, even though Course of Lime's uh, come out of it quite well. I do like Course of Lime, but um I'd be prepared to take a chance with Elixir de Nuts. He's a, he's a good horse. Uh, you kind of know what you're going to get with him. He'll probably sit handy enough, if not make try to make all. Uh, he's got a fairly tough constitution. He fights away horses. And his, his running with Falworth hurdle last year ended up working out not too bad. So um, he'd, be, he'd be worth a go with this. I think he's overpriced. He's probably a 4-1, a 9-2 to one, nine to two shot. Like, I think he's a much he's better much than Chisabello. And he's Five. Yeah. I can't believe that he's five to two. Um, that doesn't make sense to me at all, to be honest. Uh, but he'd be my go here at uh, thirteen to two. Yeah, fully in agreement to be taken on Chidabello. There's more progressive types in here. You'd have to think. Um, Thomas, thoughts on this? Yeah, I'd have to agree with you, lads. Uh, Chitabello and Call Me Lord are both higher rated, but for me, they want more than two mile at this stage of their careers, um, and they've been kind of campaigned over a little bit further recently. Um, yeah, two harsh race for me. Uh, Alexia the Nuts I like as well at the price, as you say, and Pentland Hills. Um, Monsieur Lecoq, um has a bit to prove coming from Handicap Company for me. Um, probably hasn't run like in a race like this, but... Um, yeah, look, if um, Colin Finley's going to be grabbing that piece of toilet paper that he says he has, um, he will be running very, very close in, in a race like this. Um, hopefully now he has it in a, in a folder put away yeah, so, it's not, so it's not disintegrating on him. <laughs> I was, I was going to say, you probably have it in a little picture frame on the table for the Champ that he uh, Christmas special podcast, which will... Tell the listeners about um, near the end of of the show. But lads, just one other race from Saturday that we're going to cover here. The 2.30, actually, we're going back in time here. But the 2.30 at Shelton, which is the Albert Bartlett's Novices Hurdle Trial. Um, that's a grade two. It's been won by some nice types. I'm actually going to feel, I was looking at the past winners there, Kilbrick and Storm won it, of course. You know what I mean, Harry Holstone. So King's Palace was a horse I loved. Uh, won this race back in 2013. So it's been really, won by some nice nice horses. Champagne well. Um, Tyne Hill, lads. A lot of people are talking about this Tyne Hill as a Ballymore, potentially Albert Bartlett horse. 
So the form of champagne well is, is quite good. He's a horse that can seem to take to, but there's one in very, very sweet in, in here. And that's the Nicky Henderson trained. He was only rated 125 before his last run. But Tom, he's a horse that say you'd love to have in the yard now. Big strap and presenting. Um, lovely looking horse. I love presentings. Igor. Um, so he, he, if, if he's declared for this, I'd imagine Sam Wally Cole will probably ride. He goes from the front. Thought he done it very, very nicely on his on his last start. And I think he's a horse that'll have a lot of fun with. I think that was the quote actually from Nicky Henderson. We'll have a lot of fun with him in, in staying um, novice hurdles. Papa Tango Charity, of course, was bought for a huge figure after coming from point to point. He stayed on that day to finish um, second um, seven lengths at Ascot. Um, so he's a horse I actually am very sweet on. He's probably going to be my... I'm definitely if he if he lines up in here at that sort of price, I'll definitely he'll definitely be a player for me. Um, Andrew, thoughts? Uh, I'd be with you. I can't take the champagne well. Uh, based on his form with Time Hill, he probably should win this race. Wow. I just think he struggles to get the job done. He had plenty of chances.